I'm Claire and I'm going to show you how to do an appliqued heart with these lovely decorative free machine embroidered curls on it. It's something that you could actually bead afterwards. I think it looks quite effective when you hand sew some little seed beads at the ends of the curls. But here we go, this is how you do it. So I'm taking a three inch square piece of bondaweb and I'm going to iron it to a piece of Dupion silk. Dupion silk is a great silk because of the weight. It's not too thin, so you don't get any spotting from when you actually iron the bonder web to it. So I happen to have some here. When you use bonder web, just remember to iron it rough side down. So as I feel this now, I can feel that that's the rough side. This is the paper that's just holding, if you like, the, the bonder web. So I'm just going to iron that to my silk. So I'm going to place it close to the edge and then although this is, has a backing paper I am always in the habit of putting a bit of baking parchment over the top just to protect it just in case any of the glue should ooze out the sides so a bit of baking parchment over the top or greaseproof paper and using a hot iron dry just give it a firm press a bit like ironing wet jeans okay and we're done so what I like to do is to peel a corner off first, if you can, oops, would help if I had the thumbnail, there we go. So just peel a corner off first and then cut around your bonder web and then you've got your square all ready to cut a heart out of. There we are. And the reason I peel that corner off is so that now I can peel it off quite easily. Now, before I do that, if I wanted to, I could fold that in half and with the paper still attached, draw a heart like that and cut it out using paper scissors. But I'm gonna be brave. I'm actually gonna peel the whole thing off and cut one out freehand. So again, fold it right sides together because although this isn't really sticky if I did just fold that in on itself it would stick to itself so just fold it right sides together the side that you haven't ironed the bonder web to fold it in half and then cut out a freehand heart so I start about a third of the way down and using little cutting actions I'm able to cut my heart out don't run out of space otherwise you won't have a nice point for your heart there we go open that out I'm just placing this on calico but you can use any backing fabric you like line that up and I'm just going to pop my baking parchment over the top again with a firm iron And now I'm ready. I'm going to take it over to the sewing machine and sew it up. Right, I'm here at the machine and I'm going to show you how to machine embroider this heart. What's a good tip is to actually practice drawing the curls before you actually launch yourself at the machine. So I've got a heart here on a bit of paper and what I'm going to do is just show you how to do those curls, hopefully so that you can practice doing a curl to the left and a curl to the right and doing different size curls, because it's very easy to do curls, if you're not careful, all the same size. So here we go. So I tend to start up here, and what I do, I'll do a curl, and then I go back over the curl until I'm ready to branch out. So I make my way around the heart, trying not to go too close to the edge, because I don't really want the heart to fray. So I'm making my way around. Can you see I'm just trying to do the hearts in different directions. I'll make my way up here. Making my way all the way around. And 
there we are. So I have gone over all of the heart, uh, the curls twice. What I need to do now is go over the main body of the drawing so that it will look as if I've gone over everything twice. So just follow the main, what I call the main stem, if you like, main line that joins all the curls together. And if you just go like that, you should end up where you started. Voila, I have. Right, so now what I've got to do is actually make sure that I do that on the sewing machine. So I'm gonna put my heart in a hoop. I've got a hand embroidery hoop here and I've slackened the screw and I'm removing the inner hoop, popping that fabric over the outer hoop Sort of position your heart so it's in the middle and what I like to do is pull my fabric up at right angles, get it really nice and tight and if, by pulling it up at right angles it should help prevent my inner hoop from flipping out. So pull that up, tighten it so that you do have it really nice and tight. I'll just make sure it's as tight as it will go. And it's like a canvas really, you want it like nice and tight and then you're ready to sew. Now what I'm actually going to do is sew around the edge first a couple of times and then I'm going to do my curls. So I've set my machine up to free machine embroider and I've got black thread, I've got viscose thread in, I've got my lovely Madeira threads and as I say, I've got the black thread in the bobbin as well. My tension is the same for normal sewing on here. I haven't messed about with my tension, but I have, of course, lowered my feed dogs and I've got an open-toed free machine embroidery foot on. So I'm going to set off. So lift that up. And I always bring my bobbin thread up before I start. So if you want to be precise, rather than just using the needle up, needle down button, you can use the side wheel that exactly where you want it to go pop your needle back in lower your presser foot and you're off ready to go so I'm going to oops. it's making that popping noise because of the bond web so if that's why well, you can hear that noise I'm just going to cut my ends off where's the scissors gone Thank you very much, Glamorous Assistant. <laughs> and I'm just going to whiz round. So what you can do with free machine embroidery is always stop and turn your piece round so that you can see where you're going. And we'll go up the other side. say stop turn your work around and what looks nice with raw edge applique is to go around again so that can be a bit of a challenge going over the same line twice but on a lot of pieces of work it does look quite good if you actually are not too precise Anyway, here we go. I'm just going around a couple of times. So I'm stopping and turning my work around so I can see where I'm going. This lovely open-toed foot allows you to do that. Really enables you to see where you're going. Turn it around again. Obviously I'm controlling my stitch length by how fast I move my hoop and how fast I press on the pedal. There we go. 
So that's the heart all attached and now I'm off going to do the curls. So remember to breathe when you do this. It's very easy to sort of take a deep gulp of air and then uh, hold on to your breath. But breathe and try to remember those little doodles that you did. And, and it's quite handy to have that nearby. And even if you have to do a little chant to yourself, over to the left, over to the right. I mean, whatever it is, just sort of keep that idea in your head. So I'm going to do the curls and here we go. So I'm going to do a curl and then I'm going back on myself until I'm ready to branch out. So I'm going to go up here. I did mention earlier don't go too close to the edge otherwise it will fray. That's if you haven't actually stitched all the way around the edge. In some of my other heart samples I haven't. So I'm just going around just remembering to, to scale up those curls. It makes the heart look more interesting if you've got them different sizes and going in different directions. Now I'm just going to stop and have a little look because there's a bit of a gap there. Do I need to squeeze one in there? No, I think I'm all right. But as I say, please always remember to stop and have a look at what you're doing. Curl to this side. I'm going back over my curl until I'm ready to branch out. over my curl. card or something as well. So I'll just do another little curl up there. Now what I'm going to do slightly, um, I don't want to go back over this curl again so I'm actually just going to branch out this way so slight deviation. I'll come over here and then do a curl there, go back on myself, and a curl in there. And then if I go back on myself, that's me with the heart finished. So what I now need to do is make sure that I follow the main stem and then I will have gone over everything twice. Because as can you see, the curls you can see have been stitched over twice but the main line of everything has only been stitched over once. If you're just totally relieved to have got to the end, then of course you can stop, you don't have to go back over yourself. But I think it looks quite nice. So if need be, turn your work round so that you know what direction you're moving in and you just follow the way back. time and turn your work round so that you don't lose your way. It can be a bit disorientating. I'm still breathing. And there we are. 
one raw edged appliqued heart with some fancy curls all ready for beading. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe. And if you want to know how to do this and come to one of my classes, then please look at my workshops on my website, www.clairemuir.co.uk. Thank you. See you soon.